Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look at Google Classroom. I'm going to have a series of videos about Classroom as I get myself back into using this as my learning management system or my, my, my LMS uh, for my classes. Um, I At my university, I have an online content management system or learning management system. Uh, we have, it's called Oaks. Um, it is a, a version of Desire to Learn. There's a lot of schools that also use Blackboard. Um, some schools use Moodle or Canvas. Um, for my purposes, I choose to use in my classes free online tools. And the reason why I use free online tools is because I'm teaching teachers. And I want to use tools that they will be able to ultimately use in their settings, out in their placements, in their field, and in their careers. Um, I think it's asinine that I have them use you know proprietary like use blackboard or use oaks in my case use a system that they'll they will never be able to use uh in their classroom i think it's important that as they use the tools in my classroom as they study this learning management system or this online classroom environment as a student i want them to figure out okay well how might i set this up and use it as an instructor or a teacher so study it as a student, understand what your students are going to fake to, you know, encounter in these spaces. And then, you know, what does it mean uh, when I set up my ultimate classroom? So I've been using a lot of Google Classroom lately. Um, I use it because uh, it, it it's being used a lot in our schools. Um, it is a little bit uh, extra work for me as a higher ed instructor. It's a little bit higher, harder, uh, a little bit more work, I should say, um, because Normally, when I start up a class, I can go into my learning management system. I can go into Oaks, and everything is already set up there for me. My students are in the class. Pretty much don't have to do anything. Um, this requires me to actively build every semester, build um, and add in students to the learning management system. So it's more work on my end, but I feel like it's worth it. Um, so with Google Classroom, I should note that I'm not entirely happy with a uh, classroom and what it can and cannot do um, and I'm making a concerted effort to add more content and figure out how I can tweak and hack it to make it do what I want it to do specifically I'm not really happy with the the ability to like run or facilitate online discussions there that's another talk for another day so this video I just want to talk about how I get things set up so if I sign into Google Classroom what it's gonna have me do is it's gonna ask me to uh, log in Previously, this was only available to educational institutions. Now you can run it pretty much with any Google account. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to click through and log in with my uh, higher ed credentials. This is a little bit easier for me um, in dealing with my students because then I know that I can add them pretty quickly to my class. So you can see some of the other classes that I have already set up. Um, I come up here and I can create or join a class. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. I'm going to call this uh, the the prefix that I use for or the the institution uses for my classes, and I'm going to call this uh, Spring 2018. Uh, I'm going to give it a section number, so I'm going to say 01, and the subject we're going to call it uh, Language and Literacy. Come on, if I could type. Language and Literacy, create, it's going to go ahead and create a course for me. So as this initially launches, this is what you have. You have the title here. You can see the section of the class. Um, I have a stream here. So the basic layout is you have a stream, almost like Facebook or Edmodo. Um, you have a stream of, of all of the assignments and all the work. This is not that much uh, th that difficult. The challenge is as more and more content is there, once you pass eight or 10 announcements or assignments, um, students frequently get lost. And so what I find it's helpful to do is add topics um, and, and keep things organized or add some structure. You can add, show the stream and, and show deleted items for it. Um, I can have an assignment here. Um, and use the calendar. I don't usually use the calendar functionality of this, um, mainly because a lot of my students don't follow it. Um, so I don't feel like it's worth it to me, um, but I might change that over time. So I can also, before we dig in a little bit deeper, I can uh, find what students are available in here. Um, what I will do is 
in my other learning management system, the one that they come to immediately, I basically send an email, tell them to go to classroom.google.com, create an account, or actually sign into Classroom using their credentials from the institution. And then I say, okay, you need to search for, or better yet, add this code. Um, and the reason why you want to tell them that is because all they have to do is once they sign into Classroom, they'll come in and they'll basically, most of them won't have anything here. So if I go back, so most of them when they sign in the first time, they will not have any classes here. They'll, I basically send them a tutorial that says go up, click this little plus sign and hit join class. Once you join class, it's going to ask for that class code. And that's that class code that you're going to give them from here. So I give them the class code. They're automatically in. It's not that difficult. Um, I give them the ability to post and comment. Um, you can limit that uh, as you see fit. One of the, you know, after that, I come into, as I set up my class, one of the first things I really do is I come over here and I will add my class materials. So I'll say, okay, here is our syllabus for class. I'll go grab the link for the syllabus. Or I can pull in a Google Doc. So say here is our, our syllabus for class. It'll link it over there. I can also have a video introducing myself or talking them through the class. I can have hyperlinks to other pieces, Google Docs, attachments, pretty much anything that I need. I can also invite in my grad assistant or other teachers or a research assistant um, to help me out in the class. If I want to have someone be a leader in the class as well, I can help, I can add them. Uh, as I said before, there is the ability to have a, a calendar for the class or a Google calendar. And it's a way to like set assignments and dates. As you set assignments for the class, you'll have the ability to add a date for that and it will automatically add it to this calendar for the class. Like I said, I don't use that often because most of my students, they have their own organizational system, or at least they say they do. Um, so for the most part, I don't use that right now. One of the other tricky things about Classroom is they will automatically make like a nested series of folders in Google Drive for your classroom. And as assignments are turned in by students, those assignments will get put into that nested series of Drive folders. So if you're a, 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 a Google Drive ninja, that'll be great for you. It'll be easy to pay attention um, and follow their stuff. The challenge is if they submit a piece of work in a Google Doc, which all of my students do, if they submit something in Google Docs, um, I like them to edit, revise one or two major assignments over the course of the semester. So if they submit it once in a, in a drive, in a, in a Google Doc, it, it locks down that uh, Google Docs, so they only have viewing privileges now, um, and I have to go back in several times in the semester and basically turn off uh, or change the sharing settings so that they can edit or revise their work. So that is a little bit annoying to me, but it's just me not knowing how the tool works and, and adjusting. So we looked at the About page. I can go in and I can edit this uh, disclaimer or description up at the top. We talked about the students page and inviting students in. I just use the class code. I don't bother inviting individual students to it. The stream is where most of the information um, is presented to students. Now, one of the things, one of the challenges with Classroom is, for the most part, you are, you know, handing out or delivering uh, announcements or information or you're announcing um, assignments you're delivering assignments and you're collecting um, so it's it's not a lot of dialogue back and forth for the most part it is you are sending out content or an announcement or an assignment and having students just review it or submit an assignment anytime you try to move past that that one way or initial you know simple two-way dialogue it doesn't work that well. So if you're trying to run discussions here, it does not work, um, at least for me. And that's one of the, the sticking points for me. I have other tools that I use for that. Um, but for just basically uh, keeping them aware of what's happening and uh, giving out assignments, it, it works. It does a good job. Um, so you can come in here and I can select a different theme. So I have different photos that I can add in, you know, so I can say, I, I like this theme here. Select the class theme. It's going to change the 
uh, the image up top and the color scheme across it. So that's, that's sort of nice. Um, but then the, the real gist of it here is I can create announcements, assignments, a question, or reuse a post. So if I have like a journal prompt or like a, a weekly reminder of something they have to do. So if I have an announcement, I can go in and I can say, okay, this is for this class. So I could change that here. Is it for all students? Yes, it is. And I basically, you know, add announcement here. Now, one of the things I think is important is um, that you make good use of your topic structure to keep students organized. So I almost view this like table of contents. So what I'll do is for like a general, you know, beginning of the year, I'll say, okay, this is a general post. So I have a general thread. Um, and then what I'll also do is I think it's important to have a section for like frequently asked questions. Um, or a water cooler in my in my classes. So I might say, um, you know, please let me know if you have issues. And they I can give them instructions if I want to. This is where I can have a due date for the question um, for topic. I'm going to have a new one. I'm going to say uh, water cooler. Um, sometimes I'll say like frequently asked questions. But this is a chance for you to have a spot in your online classroom where they could talk about pretty much anything. I think that's important in my classes, um, allowing them to share notes or news or questions about another class or an interesting resource. Um, you might find one or two students use it in the semester, but I think it's important to have that sort of like off task area for them to discuss content. So students can reply to each other. Yes. Students can edit the answer. Yes. Um, is it short answer? Yes. Um, and if I want to, I can allow, I can add an attachment or a video or a Google Drive folder or a Google Doc or, you know, I can add an attachment or a link. Um, and then I can basically schedule this or save the draft or just ask it. So now I have in here a general announcement. I have a question. Um, so I can have students come in if they have questions about the course or the syllabus or where is this. That's one of the typical questions. I can have them ask it there. So I have an announcement, I have a, a question, reuse post, but then I also have an assignment. Um, this is, you know, our, our first journal assignment. And I can add in my instructions here. Um, and then I can, you know, basically have them give me, I can give them details about what I'm looking for, set a due date for this thing. This basically pulls up your calendar, add a topic. I'm going to say this is for week one. Um, and then what I typically will do is I'll add a lot of hyperlinks or, or Google Docs to show to link out to other materials or resources they need. Now, as soon as I assign this thing, I can schedule it. I assign it. So I assigned it and it's basically due tomorrow. Um, I can see how many students have finished it, how many students have, you know, started it as students uh, submit materials what it's going to do is it's going to put those materials into once again those series of, of google drive folders the nested drive folders for this class so it's good to be able to go in and see what students have done um, and then I, i'll have subsequent videos here where i look at how do you what does the student work look like as it comes through the system so i'll, I'll have that coming up but while we're here this is just initial setting up of google classroom once again, the nice thing is if you use your topics as like a nested way to organize information or, or headers, if students are lost, I basically tell them, okay, and I build this up over time. I think it's too much at the beginning of the semester, but I basically say, okay, you know, general is just general topics. Water cooler is like off topic, you know, pieces or off, uh, you know, stuff that's not really germane to the class but you think it's important for the group and then week one will have the readings and the assignments and stuff like that for week one also um, as the the year or the semester progresses of uh, week two week three week four or module one module two module three um, or different themes or units however your class is organized um, so once again this is the basic this is how i get classroom up and running um, you know, it's an easy way, relatively easy way to make announcements, 
hand out assignments, collect assignments, grade assignments. For my part, it doesn't really do a good job with discussions, um, and that's one of the sticking points for me. Um, but for the most part, it, it does uh, what I needed to do, and I use it because a lot of my students use it in class. Um, one last thing I want to take a look at while we're here is if I go back, I can look at all of my classes. I want to take a look at an assignment or an announcement I just sent out so you can see typically what I will send out. So this is an announcement that I sent out earlier this morning. Um, it's tagged week one. So this is a real live class. It's tagged week one. This is the stream that students would see when they come in. Um, I have at the beginning of the stream a general hi welcome to class. The syllabus is here. And then I only have at this point one announcement. No assignments at all. This is in week one. I don't want to confuse them. I'm also having them uh, get started with hypothesis and I know that will be challenging so I'm basically giving them like a pre-assignment assignment. assignment. Um, later today I will post the actual reading and expect that they start to use hypothesis but I know at this point students are chomping at the bit. So I basically say hi all it's good to see you. Um, I add the links, the hyperlinks here in uh, the body. For some reason I'm not smart enough I can't figure out how to make just this the hyperlink as of yet so I put it in here as the hyperlink but I also include all of the links down below in order in the order that I discuss them up here in case a student wants to uh, click through okay and I tell them here that I basically include the links in the text but then I also include the links down below and you can see I have hyperlink out to a blog post of mine I have two videos that I created um, and then other blog posts and materials and here's that link to their hypothesis group. Um, so this is a post, an example of an announcement in one of my current classes. So hopefully this is meaningful to you. This is a take uh, a look at Google Classroom and how I use Classroom in a lot of my classes. I use this instead of the other um, you know learning management systems and content management systems that my institution uses. This is a choice that I am making. Um, and by all means, if this helps you, uh, please uh, like the video. Let me know what I got right or wrong. Let me know what I should be doing with Google Classroom that I'm not currently, because I know that all the Google Classroom ninjas out there will see this and, and say, well, you should be, you should be. Well, let me know what I'm doing right or wrong. Um, and you can also check out my blog. You can visit my posts and see a lot of the other things I'm writing and thinking about. Um, and by all means, um, subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, if you haven't already, it's a, a weekly thing, a, a weekly piece of information that I think you need uh, to be the expert. Um, so once again, thanks a lot for uh, watching this. Have a great rest of the day.